welcome back. Uh, we have so far talked about some really cool, interesting ideas from programming, including iteration, conditionals. And this week, we're going to talk about what I think is my favorite, which is randomness. Randomness doesn't seem like it would be a really good fit with making stuff, but actually, um, that's one of the things the computer does really, really well. And it allows us to leverage the power of repetition, random number generation, to make images, um, animations, all kinds of things that we wouldn't normally be able to do um, using a different method. So let's take a look at uh, how we generate random numbers and one example of how we might use those. Um, so I've got my uh, P5JS sketch open here. And uh, before we draw something with this, let's just see kind of what happens or how we generate a random number um, and how that kind of works. So we can create a variable uh, and use P5JS's built-in random function. Um, the random is going to ask for two numbers. It's going to ask for the minimum and the maximum that it's going to give us. So if we say 0 and 100, and then console.log, then we can run this. And now we see when we run the sketch, we get 88.377 something. If I run it again, we're going to get a new random number and a new random number. Now, a couple of things to note here before we dive below and make some drawings with this. One is the maximum is actually not the maximum number that this command is going to give us. It's going to give us this number minus 1. So actually, our range here is not 0 to 100, but it's 0 to 99. And this is going to be important in a sec, for example, when we create um, color values. One other thing to note, and we're going to see why this is important also in a little bit, um, you'll notice that this gives us a decimal number, uh, also known in programming as a floating point number. Um, and this is going to be really key for some things when we want to access uh, or when we need an integer, a whole number with no decimal. For example, if we want to get a random element from a list, we're going to see this in a little bit. So don't sweat that for now. But I think these are two kind of important things to think about. Uh, so let's look in the draw down here. We can, oh, one more thing I'm going to add to my setup. And we've talked about this a little bit already. And that's no loop. Uh, if you remember draw, this function here runs over and over as fast as possible. And um, I promise animation is coming. When we get to animation and interaction, um, we really want to have that happen. But for now, we're making still images. And um, we can see in a sec what happens if we turn those off. But um, uh, no loop just means run the draw once, stop, and then we're good there. Uh, so for generating static images, that helps. And it may make our code run a little better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a black background. And I'm going to turn off stroke here. And let's draw some random circles. So I'm going to do that in a for loop. Maybe we can draw 100 for now. Actually, no, let's do 10, and then we'll do some more in a little bit. Um, this is one of the fun things, is drawing lots and lots and lots of random shapes. Um, and let's do a fill right now of white. And if we want to draw a random circle, maybe the first thing we need is an x and a y point. So I can say x is random between 0, the far left-hand side of the screen, and width, the far right-hand side of the screen. And I can do the same thing for y. And we could draw a circle. So x and y as our random position. And for now, let's make them all, I don't know, 30 pixels. And so you can see here, we've got our, um, our random circles. And if I run this again, now they're going to be in a new place and in another new place, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if we change from 10 circles to 100, it starts to look really different. And this is one of the really cool things I think about using randomness is you start changing some parameters and this whole new kind of thing emerges. If we go from 100 to 1,000, so right now it's kind of like bubbles and chains. Now all of a sudden it's more white than black. It's like more the negative shape becomes the shape rather than the positive shape. And similarly, if we change this fill from opaque white to semi-transparent, Again, totally different. Now it's more like fog or something. And these start to look really different. Um, let's add a couple more random parameters here. And we can start to think about all the places that we could plug randomness in. Um, we could set the diameter of the circle. And maybe we want this to be between 
uh, I don't know, 10 and 100. And instead of 30 down here, we can use our variable diameter. And now we get varying size. Maybe I'm gonna reduce the number of these. So that's pretty cool. And let's add one more thing to this. So let's add some random color. Right now, these are all the same. I'm gonna go inside here, make it a little new section. And I wanna make a random red, green, and blue color. So I'm gonna do these separately. One for R is random between zero and 256. Remember, random is gonna give us a number between the minimum and one minus the maximum. So if I want zero to 255, I have to say 256 here. And we could do the same thing for green and blue. And then I could say fill R, G, and B. So just like any uh, variable, I can plug in you know, into any command here. So I can use randomness to set fill color. We could add transparency to this. So alpha also between zero and 255. which is pretty cool. Now, I don't love random RGB color. I think it usually looks like random RGB color. So, you know, this doesn't look super great. In another example, in a minute, we'll see how we can pick from a color palette. And I'm sure you could think of lots of other ways to make this work better. Um, and you might also think about other places that we could plug in randomness here. So if you wanna stop for a second and work on this example, um, maybe think about other things you could add, different shapes, that kind of thing I think could be really cool. Um, one thing that you might try is color mode. This command changes how color gets interpreted and drawn on screen, um, which it includes RGB, but it also includes um, HSV, hue, saturation, and value or brightness, um, which actually would work really good for this. So if you wanna pause for a sec and try this, I think you'll find some really cool places you can um, experiment here and add randomness in. Um, oh, sorry, one more thing before we move on. Let's see what happens if we turn off no loop, because this is kind of fun. Um, it may not be what we're after, but <laughs> we get madness, right? We get these like crazy shapes here. Um, and like I said, soon we're gonna be doing animation, I promise, but for now, we're gonna stick with still images. So we'll see you in the next video to uh, think about another way that we can use randomness to control the structure of our program.